question. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Know Where to Go, Secondary Sources at the library. I guess I'm starting. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, my name is Grace Therrell. Hi, everyone. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I am the student success librarian for online pedagogy here at UT Libraries, which basically just means that I work uh, with online learning here in the libraries. Uh, and there's my email. If you have questions after today, if you need help with research, I am here to help out with that. And my name is Chris Powell. I use she, her pronouns. I am a student success librarian for information literacy, and I work most closely with any of the first year composition classes. So like English 101, 102, et cetera. And you can reach out to me at carissa at utk.edu. So we will be covering a few things today. We're gonna to be talking about some definitions that we'll be using in this presentation. We'll be going over where to go for secondary sources and then also talking about how it looks and feels and kind of like what that process will be like. Uh, before we jump into things, we would love to give everyone about a minute to share questions that they came to this presentation with today. So um, you can scan the QR code on the screen or you can go to slido.com and type in 421680 and we'll leave about a minute for questions so take a second um grace has the hot link in the chat even better so anything that you're maybe struggling with or working through or curious about we would love to hear Okay, right, so we have a question about where to find secondary sources. And I think that's a really great question that, you know, maybe you've got your assignment and you know you need a secondary source, but you're not sure where to go. Um, we've also got a question about the best databases. So maybe you started exploring the databases and it got really overwhelming and you're not sure which one to go to. I think those are both really good questions. All right, so that was about a minute. If you have questions as, oh, we have another one. Um, oh, they're all coming in now. This is so exciting. Uh, so we've got a question about um, finding like accuracy. So kind of maybe talking about like how you're evaluating the secondary sources you're looking through. Um, and even a question about like what kind of secondary sources do we have these are all super awesome very excited um i am hoping that our workshop will answer most of these but again if we don't answer it to the depth you're really intrigued by please um ask it again during the q a portion all right so grace is going to talk about some definitions yeah, so we're going to be using some terms during this workshop that you might not be familiar with, um, or maybe you just need a refresher. Uh, so we're just going to talk about a few of those so we're all on the same page. So first, what even is a secondary source, right? <laughs> if you're here, uh, you might have an idea of what a secondary source is, but maybe you aren't sure. Um, so here's a common definition. A secondary source is essentially a resource that comments on, analyzes, summarizes, or interprets a primary source or another secondary source. So if you are aware of what a primary source is, like interviews, newspaper articles, photos, um, things like that, secondary sources will use those. 
Um, they will comment on those sources and they could also comment and use on other secondary sources. Uh, some examples of secondary sources are journal articles. So if you hear about a peer reviewed article or a scholarly article, if you're asked to find those for your research assignments, those are secondary sources, literature reviews, book reviews, scholarly books, um, those are all secondary sources and we also have access to all of those in the libraries. Another term we're going to be talking about is a database. Um, a couple of you, it looked like asked about databases or like what's the best database to find secondary sources. Uh, so you've probably heard the term database before. Basically all it is is a collection or index of resources with full text, citations, or abstracts. So this screenshot is from PsycInfo, now called APA PsycInfo. Um, if you've ever heard of that database, if you've ever researched a, a database, if you've kind of searched around, then this probably looks familiar to you. I know it's really small, uh, but that screenshot probably looks familiar to you. So other examples besides API Stack Info would be Academic Search Complete, JSTOR, Web of Science, uh, PubMed. We have more specific databases as well. Um, so those are places where you will just be looking to find some of those secondary sources. And then the last term we're gonna talk about is a research guide. So you may or may not be familiar with this. Um, if you've asked a question on the library's chat before, maybe they've suggested a research guide to you. If you've ever had a librarian talk to one of your classes, or if you've come to a workshop before, maybe you've heard the term research guide. And all a research guide is, is a collection of information to help with research in a specific context. So that could be on a specific source type. So we have a primary source guide, for example, that's all about looking for primary sources and gives you places to start. We have research guides for specific courses. So for example, we have a first year composition guide. So if you're in one of those FYC classes that Carissa works with, there is a research guide specifically for those courses. Um, and there are some other more, um, there are some other research guides for specific courses as well. And then we also have research guides for basic disciplines or subjects. So psychology has a research guide that basically just gives you all of these different places where you can start with your research. Um, so that's what we mean when we're talking about a research guide. Um, so hopefully that gives a little bit of information and hopefully we're all on the same page as we go into talking about what secondary source research looks like and Carissa is going to talk with us about that. Yay, I love a definition. All right, so we're going to talk about what secondary source research looks like. Um, so we are going to check out two of those um, types of resources that Grace talked about already. So I'm going to get my yellow cursor. All right, so if you are following along on your own computer, which you're very welcome to do, we are going to go to our home page, lib.utk.edu. I'm going to zoom in a tiny bit. Not that much, though. Um, our research guides are on the home page. So if you scroll down to where it starts to say research, we're going to hit research guides. And Michaela is throwing links in chat, which is super, super awesome. And anyone can also um, save the chat if you want to. So you can have the links after today. All right. Um, I'm going to pretend that I am in. English 101. And all I know is that there's some English resources. So I'm going to go down here. Um, because first year composition has a lot of classes under it, we have one combined first year composition guide. But if you click on the little info, I know that it's any of these classes will benefit from it. And this is your research guide if you are in one of these courses. And so from here, you could say, ooh, I'm working on finding some secondary sources. I can come to that tab and click through any one of these to get a good sense for it. Um, additionally, if you're working on your primary sources, you can click there. If you're like, ooh, I've got some sources and I'm not sure which one to pick, 
you can go to evaluate. Um, lots of great options there. So this is what a research guide looks like if you start obviously taking lots of other classes. There's research guides for, um, I don't know, French. There's like a research guide for almost every class subject you should take here. So um, definitely take advantage if you are in another class and you're getting started on a paper and you're really not sure what the best database might be. So that's really getting to the question about like, ooh, where do we start? Which database do I start with? I think those are some really great options. All right, I'm gonna pause for any questions about research guides for a couple seconds. All right, so that is our research guides. Um, you can also find them by librarian. Like if you're like, oh, um, I know that like Carissa Powell gave a presentation today. I'm just gonna go find her lib guides and you can find some other ones I do. Um, you can also like look by type. Maybe you're just like, ooh, I'm interested in these general concepts. It's not for a specific course, um, but maybe like in general, you're researching anti-racism, there's a libguide for that. So this is just one way to start off your research process. All right, we are now going to head over to our articles and databases. So there were a lot of questions when we asked what questions folks have today. A lot of questions about what resources are available, where to get started, which ones are the best ones. So if you're back on the library's homepage and come down to find materials, and we're gonna click on articles and databases. So, and again, like even if you get to this page, this can still be very overwhelming. So I'm just gonna break it down a little bit. So we first have find databases by name. So if you're like, I kind of remember the name of a database I wanna look up, you can type in one word, hit search, see what happens. We also have a few top, top hits um, where these are kind of the databases that we know work for a lot of different topics for a lot of different researchers. So you could also just try one of those out. Maybe you are researching by subject. So, um, you know, you're taking an education class. So we're going to pop over here and we have these amazing subject librarian. So if you are in an education class, Teresa Berry is your class librarian. Um, but Teresa has also come in here and said, these are kind of like, if you're researching education, these are some of the best places to start. Okay. And then from there, we also organize by type. This is particularly really helpful if you're in, um, English 102, doing your primary sources activity, you can pop right here and see all of the ones by that. But we're talking about secondary sources today. So we are gonna get started. Oh, and then if you ever like, we're gonna end on this too, but if you ever see this chat with us page, you can always open that up and ask a question as long as the library is open. And if not, you can shoot an email or shoot me an email. Okay, sweet. We're gonna get started with academic search complete. Uh, can I be like in chat if you have used this tool before, just like a yes or a no? Like, yes, I've used academic search complete. No, I haven't. OK. 
Okay, I see one no. I hear another no. Okay, sweet. So you're gonna learn some fun new cool things today. Um, hearing a lot of no's, sweet. So this is what it looks like. We have some places to search up here. Um, if you're really going crazy down here, you can limit by date, uh, by type, by document type. Grace has an amazing reminder in chat that I am off campus. So you saw me do the whole sign in process. If you're on campus, it will just automatically recognize your have access and pop you in. Um, but yeah, you have access to this 24 seven, just log in with your net ID and password. Um, for folks who are here, do you have a research topic you're working on right now that I could borrow and do a search on? So maybe this is the project you're doing for class. And, ooh, okay, sweet, awesome. We've got a taker. So we're gonna be researching nursing homes for the elderly. All right, so instead of popping that whole thing in, I'm gonna do nursing home and elder. Okay, this is like, I'm just gonna explain my process here. So um, if you throw in an asterisk, it's kind of like you're going to get every ending after that. So um, I'm going to get elderly, elder. I'm going to be honest, those are the two that I'm thinking of, but you'll get both of them by adding the asterisk. So we're going to hit search. Thank you so much for giving us an example. Okay. The most important thing I would recommend checking is that right now we're doing date newest. That can be great if you're researching something where you need the most up-to-date thing, but I'm going to set it to relevance because I am interested in the most relevant right now. Um, so I'm going to show this first one just for the sake of showing what this looks like. We're going to click on the title. From here, I would spend some time um, looking at your authors, um, spending some time looking at the abstract. If I've done all that and I'm like, ooh, I really wanna read this after today, I recommend sending it to yourself in an email, copying the permalink or downloading the PDF to your own laptop, tablet, device, what have you. But that is just a really, one way you can go from articles and databases, pick out a database, throw in some keywords, and you've got your article. So if you need help with this after today, please, please reach out. I love working with students to help them find the articles they are looking for. So that was our research guides and our articles and databases. And now we're going to talk about how that feels team feelings. Yes, team feelings. Um, so when you're doing secondary source research, I'm sh I don't know if some of you have done secondary source research before, um, but research in general can, can elicit lots of feelings. Um, so we're going to do one more little activity. This is what the one, same one we did before, um, same code. So let me uh see if i can throw that hot link back into the chat um go back to slido.com just through the hot link in the chat again i will throw the code in the chat again um enter that code and just tell us how you feel about research so maybe how you feel when you're doing research maybe when you hear the word research how that makes you feel um so we're going to give a minute and just feel free to tell us how you feel. Join by that QR code or use this link and I will give a minute to see what happens.
You can also type the same word that somebody else has typed in. I think it'll get bigger. So if you're like, oh, angsty is also how I feel, you can type in angsty. Haha. -ha. Got quite a few negative emotions here, completely valid. Angsty, stressed, overwhelmed, a burden. Um, and then we have some that are not, not quite as negative, some that are mostly okay, sometimes good, sometimes maybe not so good. Yeah, thanks, thanks to everyone for uh, for contributing. Yeah, these are all completely valid emotions. Um, I feel this way when I'm researching. I'm sure Carissa feels some of these when she's researching. Um, and it's totally okay, right? There's a range of emotions that you feel when you're researching. So sometimes research might feel like this, <laughs> might feel very frustrating, overwhelming. You're just staring at your computer screen saying, uh, <laughs> or it could feel like this where you're just exhausted and you're overwhelmed and you're over it right or maybe even some days you go to the extreme and you're just like crying right um this this is totally real right I mean these gifts are are funny because they're supposed to be funny but all of these feelings are totally and completely real and normal when we're doing research research is not necessarily an intuitive process it's not always the easiest it involves a lot of back and forth and doing things over again and running into issues so naturally that's going to cause lots of feelings all of those feelings are okay when you're doing research though, there are some things to remember that can kind of help you like work through and move through those feelings. Um, so one is, like I said, research is a cycle. So you're probably gonna need to search more than once. I know when I'm doing research, when I've helped other students do research, um, we often run into the issue of typing in words into one search or into one of those databases and the results are just not what we want, right? And that's because you're gonna have to do more than one search probably. Uh, I would say rarely you're able to type in exactly what you need and get back exactly what you need. Um, research is a cycle, right? You're going to ask your research question, pick some words, look in some databases, maybe find some results, think about some different words that might get you some different kinds of results, put those in, find some other sources. So you're just gonna kind of go through this cycle of constantly trying to find words, those keywords, those terms that give you those results that are useful and relevant um, for your research. So it is a cycle and you're gonna need to search more than once and that's totally fine. And yes, that can be frustrating, but that is part of the process. And it's normal to feel frustrated and it's normal to feel stuck because it's a process. Um, that's one really good time to come to the library, come get some help with, from librarians. We can help you kind of work through being stuck and give you another pair of eyes. That's really helpful. It's also important to remember that there's no perfect search, it doesn't exist. <laughs> um, I think a lot of us when we're doing research, again, kind of hope for that perfect set of terms that will get us the perfect results, but really good research is a combination of a lot of different searches, a lot of different terms that get us a lot of different kinds of results. So there's not one perfect equation to get you like the perfect research result. And it's also okay to get no results. Um, if you're doing some research, you type in some terms into a database and you get nothing back, that's totally normal. All that means is that you might need to broaden out a little bit. And again, if you run into that, it's okay. That's when you can come visit the library, you can chat in and we can help you kind of work through those things. Or you can talk with your subject librarian if you're doing some discipline specific research and they can help you kind of work through those issues. So the important thing to remember is that your feelings are valid when it comes to research. It's not always fun. Um, sometimes it can be difficult, but the important thing is to remember that that's normal and just to keep moving forward. And we're gonna tell you now 
how you can get in touch if you need us to help move you through some of that. So after today on many of the library homepages, you will see this green chat with us button. So you can always click that and instant message with a librarian. I do this shift at least once a week, so does Grace. Um, so you might get us, um, but anytime the library has it open, someone is on chat. You can also call or text. You can request a consultation. Um, I'm doing consultations on the Zoom this semester. So basically that's maybe a 15 to 30 minute Zoom meeting where you get one-on-one -on -one help with your research question. Um, so all of those are really great options and we would really love to make sure that we can help get to maybe some of those, get through the negative emotions and get some more positive emotions, although they're all valid. Um, so at this point, we've got a survey for folks to take. It should only take about a minute. Uh, you could also scan the QR code on your screen if you need proof of attendance for attending today. This is the survey you have to take. Um, and Michaela, I think, is working on popping that in chat. So we are going to 